Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, hour number two today. We're going to have a special on with Professor James McCann, who hasn't been on for about maybe five, six weeks. And we're going to talk about a number of issues. Um, we had, of course, uh, last week with my birthday, the uh, February 15th, I call Asteroid Day. And it turned out, surprisingly, it wasn't just the passage of that asteroid um, that was at 17,200 miles above the Earth, the A14, uh, 2012. But we had a, uh, another asteroid that zipped across uh, Chelyabinsk, Russia. It looked like it must have been hit by some kind of directed energy weapon because it broke up into fragments in high atmosphere, and three of those fragments ended up falling nearby. Of course, a lot of nuclear facilities near there. But it was hit by an American uh, device or a Russian. Uh, obviously, something, uh, it, it looked like something anomalous happened. And I want to ask Dr. McCanny because this is the year, according to NASA, the year of the comet. Uh, Dr. M- Professor McCanny has probably been the primary scientist who's presented this to the public. Um, because the tier one scientists are fully aware of this, as well as the Vatican that has comet searching uh, telescopes, in fact, a large number of them, and from South America and all over the world, because it turns out comets are the primary event that happens relatively frequently that can cause solar superstorms, that can cause major weather problems, major disasters on the planet in terms of geotectonic and superstorm activity on, on the planet, but also superstorms on the sun, including the coronal mass ejection kill shot. So uh, to explain some of this and the danger to the power grid in the next few months, over the next two years, especially as we hit solar max, and we have three crossing comets that are going to get into the inner heliosphere of the sun very likely to create a solar superstorm if any one of these is aimed in a general direction of earth we're going to have a rough time aren't we uh hi dr bill yeah um uh, i've been talking too about something and the, you're talking about the people who control the controllers the people who own the tier one science Right. And they like control. Uh, I just want to give an example. If you're talking about terrorism, they control the news media. They control the terrorist side of the events. Uh, there could be real terrorists out there, uh, but they don't like real terrorists because they can't control them. They can't orchestrate the situation. Yeah, and they so want to control the dialectic is what you're saying. They yeah, want to control absolutely. both sides of it, yeah. Yeah, and so they since they're control freaks. And so what I've been saying is they're going to use a false flag solar event to actually pull the power on the grid themselves to make it look like there was. And that's because they want to be able to control it. They don't want a, a solar flare to hit and have an uncontrolled power outage. Uh, and so if and see, what that would do is that would sporadically take out the power grid. Uh, it wouldn't affect everybody every place. Uh, it would be just certain parts that would take the brunt of it, and then other places that would be operational. Do you see what I mean? They right. don't want that. When they take it down, they want the whole show to go down. Does and the it sound like they, they want to have these cover of these uh, comets this year, meaning they're yeah. going to try to attempt this false flag this year? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, and so... Uh, what we, what I'm expecting is to have a solar flare that might be an M class or an X class, and they're going to say, oh, this is the one that's going to do it, and pull the plug. And now, the other thing that's going on is the United Nations recently uh, took up the banner to prepare for worldwide power outage due to solar flares. Right. And so, uh, and typically, like I say, uh, if you if a solar flare hits, it's going to be a it's going to be like a big uh, tidal wave, so to speak, and you would have possibly one side of the Earth affected, the other side not. Right. And so, the, the what I, and even the side that would be affected would be sporadic. You'd still have some areas, some local areas, that would come out of it functioning relatively okay. So they they don't want that. They they need something where they control the whole show worldwide and bring it down. But you're right about the effects. The after effect is that it'll be devastating to the human race. Uh, just imagine all the things that you're not going to have. You're not going to have running water. You're not going to have sewage. 
uh, facilities. You are not going to have gasoline at the pump. Or food uh, distribution at all. Food distribution no. or shut down yeah. freeways for people that literally their car dies in the freeway and they can't get them off the freeway. Yeah, and you go to make a cell phone call because uh, your family is distributed around somewhere in school, somebody's at work, somebody's in the car. Nobody will be able to communicate. Except if they have uh, things like ham radio or walkie-talkie and a separate power system. Yeah, and so it'll be absolute pandemonium chaos, and people will be, uh, to use the old uh, 60s term, freaking out. Uh, and and uh, that's when people's uh, tempers flare. That's when people will, uh, you know, do irrational things, the old bad back situation. But like I said, um, you uh, uh, even the telecommunication system is set up. Uh, for example, say we have a big storm that moves into Florida. Uh, communication would be down. They can reroute calls to California and back to try and get them through to even affected areas. That's why the people who are in control aren't going to wait for the real kill shot. They're not going to wait for the real solar storm. They're going to do it on, on a false flag solar fl flare. And so they can control all of the grid elements that come down. And what's the ultimate goal there? Obviously, they don't want to confront the population directly, just like we found out uh, one of the latest whistleblowers that w I talked to John Moore this morning that came to John Moore, was also on Alex Jones' show, visited the uh, ammunition depot at Pendleton Marine Corps Base here. I literally opened my window, patio door here in Southern California. The reason is they're buying uh, two billion bullets to keep it out of the hands of the public because the globalists are concerned when they pull down the economic and financial systems that's the final step i believe when they have a swine avian pandemic which is by the way brewing we now have the release of a coronavirus from saudi arabia we have millions and millions of chickens being killed which h7 n3 in uh, mexico now which is an avian flu if that avian flu crosses and co-infects as a human with h3n2 uh, v flu it, we're likely to get a recombinant <clears throat> that can be a super flu that will spread like a plague with a 50 to 70 percent case fatality rate and people don't realize that these things take years so in the past i've been shown disrespect when i told them i said look Every nation on earth has already passed these things. The United Nations and the World Health Organization have already been given authority by every government on earth to take over the military and the healthcare system when a swine avian pandemic happens. They're going to hit us with multiple disasters in a sequence to disarm the public, to destroy public wealth, and to bring in a global control grid. Uh, yeah, exactly right. And so that's why you can understand what I'm saying. If if they allowed a random power grid outage, it wouldn't have the effect that they need. They need a false flag one where they can bring it down and, uh, and therefore control the public. So in other words, what you're saying is they're up against a hard place because if any one of these events has a high probability of causing a real power outage that they're not in control of, it'll destroy the dialectic and the control that they want to bring in place so they can bring in their system. Right, right. And, and also, for their own well-being, they may have to bring up certain elements of the power grid at some point, say, to move military, to move military supplies. They need control so they can do things they want, because they need electricity, too. <laughs> right, see? and the fact is that the power grid was not hardened on purpose. That they're, um, and, and I know this from talking to the people at Space Command back in the mid-'90s. They put these nanoparticles in the upper troposphere, 75 to 80,000 feet, so that they could deflect uh, the plasma and proton storm that can cause a power outage here on the ground. They could also uh, cause uh, radiomagnetic interferometry plasma weapons, which they've developed to be used, etc. We'll be back in a moment with more. Welcome 
back to the Nutramedical Medical Report. If you actually look at one of my favorite shows on television called Doomsday Preppers, you'll see a lot of the preppers think that there's going to be a financial collapse. In fact, I saw the latest show that was dealing with a gentleman from Alaska who sells uh, some very fancy boats. One of them actually had a bottom that's made of materials that's used for bulletproof vests. And his buddy made a shelter that can stand 200 mile an hour winds. And even the one of the new dome shelter he built is even bulletproof from high caliber weapons. These are Alaskans that are what I call the preppers prepper. I mean, there's, they'll survive the end of the world, to be honest with you. Uh, but the fact is that most people aren't aware that you can have something as simple as uh, two months of food and water and self-protection ammo uh, and uh, basic things, and you can hunker down in your own home and survive, especially if you're in the country. Now, if you're in a big city, and I've warned you before on this program, get the heck out. No one should be living in any big city. You can live on the outskirts and commuting in, but you never should live in any big city now in any country on earth considering the fragility of the power grid, transportation, communication systems, uh, and the fact that you need to be able to protect yourself from roving gangs of people who are going to try to get your stuff at gunpoint in order for them to survive because they haven't prepared. And people think that this is just uh, foolish. And I say, no, and you also have to get... You know, basic life support, uh, equipment and kits and training, and you need to be prepared for this stuff. This is just like any American. If you came here to the Old West 100 years ago on your wagon train, you'd make darn certain that you had proper equipment to supply, to set up your farm, to protect yourself, to treat various injuries and wounds, and uh, to have enough water to drink on the way with your rain barrels, etc. But nowadays, people think prepping is kind of crazy. It's a part of psychology that they want the people dependent on the government and the government, you know, handouts. And they're not going to be there for the people. It's really going to get pretty disgusting if people expect that if the power grid goes down, that they're going to be safe. Oh, yeah, the, the, uh, the power grid is the main thing. The, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, the spring of, what was it, 2008, I think it was, there was what I called weather bombing of the whole Midwest. These waves and waves and waves of rain came in, basically destroyed the farms. And then uh, I know there were some people high up in government that they were there to buy these farms pennies on the dollar, just to, to you know to, to take over this farmland. But uh, the, uh, the the Weather bombing is much more effective in destroying an area than even nuclear bombs. Uh, weather bombing is something that can take out entire areas and keep them down for a much longer period of time. But nothing, even weather bombing, doesn't even hold a candle to taking down the power grid. Right. The power grid, by the way, this is something people need to know, and I've repeated it so they'll get it. I believe I'm the first to mention this. If the government has any disaster, avian flu, swine flu, a radiological bomb just in two or three sites in the country, they're going to shut down the national power grid on purpose immediately. That's the first thing they're going to do. Not the second or third. Before the troops get to control the freeways, before anything else happens, they're shutting off the power grid. Period. And I have to read from the classified FEMA manual, which I saw myself back in the mid-90s. Yeah, they, uh, it's uh, the most effective way to control everything. Right. Uh, Shut off the people, power grid, then all the signs immediately stop. When the power went out April, uh, sorry, September 8, 2011, we had a um, 20-minute drive from my wife, who's coming home, Michelle, turned out to be a three and a half hour drive because of the just coming drive from Carlsbad to Vista a 20 minute drive became a three and a half hour drive because all the lights were out and people were doing stupid things they're causing car accidents blocking the road it was unbelievable what happened yeah. and if, if this would if I was going to do a B movie I'd call it the fourth day by the third day people's food would now be fully rotted so they'd have finished off their canned food the last of their dog food then people would start getting crazy Yep. Yeah, they, uh, uh, I've, I've often told people, they say, well, how long will this last? I said, if you, you, you have to be able to stay where you are for two weeks. Really? And if somebody, if somebody is crazy enough to live in a city and they get stuck there, what I tell people is don't try and go anyplace, just stay where you're at. Right, in other words, have two weeks of water, even if it's in your closet, bar yeah. off your door, have enough MREs, be able to deal with human waste, even if you have a porta potty in your apartment because it shut off the water. 
Uh, And if you can do that for two weeks, by and large, things will be so destroyed and so crazy at two weeks, you can actually, you know, go to bug out at that point. Or what I say is I call the two months bug out time. In other words, don't try to get out there. If you haven't already moved to your place of refuge, which is your permanent one, you have to be able to hunker down from two weeks to two months. At the end of two months, things have decayed so much that basically there's very few survivors left and you can deal with the rest yeah exactly and so that's it but you cannot go any place for two weeks and the other thing is uh uh people think that oh i get a quick run out and uh get a bottle of pop or Ah, or, right (laughs) i'm just gonna run over and and get cousin larry who who uh i i think he wants us to come and get him so you're gonna just get cousin larry you know or Uh -uh. something you need you know, to have a, a, a lot walkie-talkie, and Cousin Larry needs to do anything he can. If he has a motorcycle or a bicycle, he should probably not take a car. If he's got a, a, a kind of one of those army bicycles that John Moore talks about on his website, the Liberty Man, he should get his butt over as quickly as he can. But in going out anywhere to try to retrieve someone is crazy and stupid. Yeah, and that's and I and I guarantee you, most people are going to do that because oh, they're, yeah, they're, 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 yeah. they're doing that. Right. Now, if you can get out there on a motorcycle or a bicycle, you can kind of perhaps do that, especially if you're trying to get your daughter or son, and they're only a mile or two away. But if you're talking about Cousin Larry that's a half hour away or 45 minutes, forget it. Yeah, if he can't get like, there on his own power, he's not going to get there because things are going to get chaos, like, real right. quickly. Because what's going to happen? It's like the old Western where one guy goes out, and he's, he's looking for the other guy. Well, then the next guy goes out to look for him. Now what, and then, and it's you know it's just. Uh, I, I want to tie this to Obamacare. Why do you think Obamacare was so de- the government was so desperate to put it in? Because they want to have forced vaccinations. They want a biometric uh, ID, which they kicked that can down the road for another two years. Because Obamacare is going to be so noxious, it's going to be total eugenic care, Nazi care, and it's tied into a totalitarian regime that doesn't just want to control your money and have everything in electronic divots in their system. They don't want you to have private pension plans. They want to take all that money. They want to blow out the currency, and they want a health care system where we don't have medical doctors that serve you. We want medical officers that first serve the government and act as white-coated spits knots to collect information about how many guns you have. That's actually a question that's been raised up in regular journalism. I didn't invent this. I didn't think it up on a late-night you know, fugue to try to say, what can I say bizarre to entertain people the next day? No, this is a fact that people can Google themselves and find out, oh, my God, they actually are asking doctors to ask gun questions. Right. No, I've, I've had that happen to me personally, so I understand that, that, uh, what is going on. <clears throat> right. So, in other words, people need to wake up and smell the coffee. What's going on now is a preparatory stage for a major false flag, and they want to preside over it during the second term of Obama. And it's not just for America, by the way. This is for the whole world. Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report. One of the most important things to be prepared is to take care of your health. That's why we appreciate all those people out there to get all their nutraceuticals exclusively from NutraMedical.com. We want to thank you from our recent sales that we had over the uh, President's Day weekend and my birthday right through the President's Day on Monday. We want to thank all those people that take care of their health because our primary goal, the best prepper advice we can say is to prepare your neighbor. If your neighbor's prepared and you're prepared, society will survive. We'll have a civilian defense uh, militia. You'll talk to your local sheriff. You'll get take gun courses. You'll have proper protection. And the country won't decay into chaos. But if you don't have civilian protection, if you don't have a civilian militia, if you don't have preppers, you don't have uh, a situation that's survivable. And that's the problem. Is the most important thing is to get people to take the science that you present, Professor McCanny, seriously, that the globalists are hell-bent on doing things, the blowing out of the economy, the hiding of Tier 1 science, the hiding of technology that could help, the proceeding with things that could help us, like hydrofracking, but they're going to hydrofrack in areas that will take away the water from the roots of trees or destroy our farmland. 
where they shouldn't be using chemicals. And then there's other areas where they can simply make us have coal gasification and other technologies or nuclear fusion, which is tokamak fusion reactors from helium-3, which we already mined from the moon. The fact is that we have hidden all these technologies specifically because the globalists have now even through their proxy Obama and even the uh, NASA space projects go completely black op. And people like uh, Musk, who owns PayPal, now owns the Dragon uh, space fleet that are actually supplying the space station. It's obscene what's going on. Under Obama, everything is going black. He has the, says the most transparent uh, administration in history. In fact, he has the most non-transparent, evil, and maliciously sneaky uh, administration in not only American, probably, but in world history. Okay. Yeah, the, um, uh, talking about Obamacare, I just saw something interesting that corporations are almost giddy because they are getting reimbursed for uh, pushing. First of all, they push the people onto Obamacare so they don't have to pay for health insurance, and they get reimbursed for doing that. They're getting reimbursements. So for the corporations, they're laughing all the way to the bank. Oh, can you imagine? Not only do they not have to pay health care, which is one of their biggest employee costs, they get reimbursements for money that they've already spent on health care. Wow. And, and guess who pays for that? The taxpayer. Yeah. And so people don't understand that uh, uh, you know what the what the overall effect is. I can't imagine that people are so idiot, idiotic that they don't understand. Well, what people uh, would what, rather attack the messenger and even die for it because they're so stupid and self-centered and narcissistic. They think that because someone quote and it's not a conspiracy theory. A theory, you know, let's tear apart what a theory is. A theory is an idea or a construct that hopes to analyze with the objective data a thesis of what may be happening and then sets up a null hypothesis and a statistical threshold level by which it's, ex it's extremely likely that that theory is supported. Uh, and the test is called the zeta test, which is the simplest form of the, quote, theory and then the null hypothesis. The fact is people don't adhere to the fact that when you have straight up facts, it's published in their own words. It's no longer a theory. You don't need a Zeta test. You've got their own words, whether it's, uh, you know, various papers from the United Nations, the World Constituent Parliament Association with Dr. Isley, where you had a look at the World Watch Institute or others. When you look at even the information from NASA on space weather, you can see that there's a determination to obfuscate and hide information. And when you start teasing apart the facts, what you realize, especially when you get whistleblowers and scientists like yourself that have talked to tier one scientists, people realize after a while if they want to know, which a lot of people basically I call vicious ignorance, not only don't want to know, they want to attack as if you're mentally ill, evil, or just a crazy that we should walk on the other side of the street because you ask good questions and you want to know the reason why a cognitive dissonance of the population is acceptable and it's not. And it's also not acceptable for other people to believe in a fact that will cause global genocide and danger. So in other words, it's not okay for the population to stay willfully ignorant and the fact that it's going to endanger our communities and our nation. It's not okay. Yeah, the, my latest book is The Diamond Principle, and it, and, it, and it talks about exactly that, that the, the biggest problem in the world is the ignorance of the American public. Right. Uh, because that's where it starts, and that's where it grows, and that's that's where the other 250 countries of the world uh, are, ju are just absolutely devastated because of the ignorance of the American public. Right. Well, of course, they watch uh, the regular news. Regular news is useless. Fox News is about 10% is even partially worthwhile watching. Most of it is pablum or trying to make people have a emotional catharsis with no action. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's like the churches also. I, uh, I, you go to a church and the people leave and they go, I feel so good. I feel so good about the sermon and I feel good. And, and it's like, gee, I bet you paid more money too. You know, they don't, a, a well, real I, I, preacher, a, a real preacher, you would leave and you would not feel good. But they don't. 
Yeah, in other words, people want easy believism. They don't want to realize being a real Christian, for example, is a special forces thing. Uh, I like our church in North County because it makes you feel, uh, in fact, I remember the uh, lecture given over Christmas is called A Crappy Christmas. And it talks about how Christmas is sometimes the worst part of the year because it deals with reality. And the uh-huh. fact is, when you're listening to this program, people say, well, you must be a negative person, Deal. Why do you say all this stuff? It's because I'm the ultimate optimist. I face the absolute objective reality of how far down the rabbit hole we've gone, and I know it's solvable. But the time is getting very, very late. Uh, we're smack up against solar and galactic events that are going to cause extinction-level activity on the planet. We know the globalists are in a panic because they're not, they're, they're like the white rabbit with their pocket watch saying, I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. And they haven't got their global controls in place before the real disasters strike. They want absolute control so that they can be the masters and the, basically the continuers of a civilization on Earth. Right. But they, and that's they, what's going on is that they basically see themselves as the saviors of mankind or a small seed stock of mankind rather than trying to help the population to survive what's coming they're actually interfering with the spread of truth and technologies to help the humanity survive what's coming uh, yeah they uh, i've always said that the one thing they fear most are big comets because right. we're going to see them this year and that's why nasa right now is doing serious damage control uh, trying to say little snowball, wispy little 10 feet across, don't think it's big. It just looks big. Uh, and the, because the, the people in power, the globalists, know that when everybody looks up into the sky and sees that big baby up there and it fills up the entire sky in daylight, they will not be able to... Uh, stop the public from realizing that that the the globalists do not have control over that. And they're right. such control freaks; they have no way of of preventing the public from realizing. And that's why I get a lot of grief, is because I'm telling people that's a real comet. That's a plasma discharge comet. We've got one coming in right now. Comet uh, C 2012 F six lemon it's called it's uh, when, will that be, when will that be by by the way the late, Ma- late, late march early april into april it'll be visible in the northern hemisphere and it'll be uh, naked eye visible but it will be lit up like a light bulb it'll be a neon light bulb up in the sky and so they're saying that's why when the last time we talked uh i had a bad connection but i was talking about the uh uh the this comet lighting up like a light bulb well what dates is it going to come by um, uh, professor mckinney late in march early april yeah and that's the first of three major comets and all three are going to enter the inner heliosphere of the sun causing superstorms Good. Back in a moment. Welcome back to the uh, Nutri Medical Report. And uh, Professor McKenney, you have a you have a new book out now, Professor McKenney. Tell us about it. And um, of course, they should visit your website, which is JM. CCSCI.com, Jim McCanny Science, JMCCSCI.com. Uh, what are the titles of your new book and when will it be out and how can they obtain them? Okay, the, the new book is in what I call pre release right now. And so what I have is basically a sale. I never release the title until the release show. That's being scheduled right now. It'll be within about the next week. Uh, but the book will retail for seventeen ninety five. It's an ebook. Uh, it's a continuation of my science series of books. Uh, and uh, right, but right now the, you can buy it in pre-sale and pre-release sale for twelve dollars. Uh, or for the people who have not read my other five books in the science series, if they buy all five of those in ebook format, which is uh, $65, they will get the new book free. 
and uh, about one hour before the pre, uh, release program, it'll be a radio program. Uh, uh, these, all these people that buy in the pre-release will get an email, and so they can download the book at that point. So that's well, what's the, the title of the book right? again? What's the title uh, of the book again? The the new book. I'm not releasing the title until the release date. Oh, okay, and, uh, and, and but it'll be on uh, jmccsci.com, or will it yeah. go to Amazon or somewhere else? No, no, they won't. I never sell on Amazon. It'll always be on my webpage, the jmccsci.com, and uh, people can go there, like I say, right now and buy the book and uh, get it for twelve dollars instead of the seventeen ninety five. Uh, or if they buy the complete set of books, the already available five books, then they will get the new book for free. So, uh, but just go to the web page. That's all explained on the web page, the JMCC SCI web page. And within the next week, we'll be having the release program where the new book title will be announced. And it's, I'll just give you a few details. It's 40 chapters long. It's a huge book. Uh, mm -hmm. It's rich, richly uh, laden with uh, a lot of color, and it's it's going to be a journey uh, into outer space, a very uh, interesting journey where people will uh, learn. My other books uh, go into a lot of physical detail, describing methodically in a scientific method my theoretical work, the plasma discharge comet model, etc. The new book. <clears throat> basically is going to be a collage of uh, very informative information uh, and uh, brightly colored and like I say 40 chapters it's a, it's an extensive book that uh, I know people are really going to it's going to be a great addition to my current five books on space science all written for yeah. the general public. Now, if you're if you're to summarize what you do on your show, because you have your own radio show every week on uh, that, you post up the audio files, and what you do here, which and hopefully will get you back at least twice a month. Uh, this year is the year of the comp by NASA. <clears throat> it's also a year that people should, uh, what I say, own the truth, research it, go to your website, listen to the radio programs, read the books. When they start finding out the facts that the government are literally uh, ready to promulgate a false flag that will be multi-layered, it will be power outages, it will be swine avian flu pandemics, it will be economic chaos, and there's no need for any of this, by the way. <clears throat> there's no need for it at all if we are putting the proper money into uh, defense of the earth policies. We talked about this with Harley Schlanger and the Lewis Foundation. If we talked about open science instead of Tier 1, Tier 2, if we talked about real uh, public hygiene things that will stop spread of airborne plagues that will come in an international airliner with a chain of custody and an air filtration system, etc., there's no need need for any of these disasters to happen. The fact is the globalists rule by dialectics of chaos and they're about to do a series of dialectics on the population of the planet and it's a small number of people, less than a thousand, that basically are designing and collecting all the wealth of the planet and blowing out the dollar, etc., so that they can then promulgate mass genocide of the population of Earth. Now people think that's so negative and out there that it can't be real. <clears throat> the fact is the whole first... Uh, <clears throat> two wars and <clears throat> of the 20th century were an attempt by the globalists to start doing that process and <clears throat> they've already planned a third world war which they're now into the, well into the economic phase they've now moved the science and the building of underground bases and hotels for the global elite they have now isolated tier one science completely from medical black ops so that people don't even believe we've been back to the moon or we have space fleets like Gary McKinnon discovered in, in space why they want to extradite him for, for prosecution in the United States because they don't want it to get out that tier one science is hiding quadrillions of dollars of investment in advanced scientific protocols and, and technologies uh, literally to bifurcate society into a supra race that receives genetic and cybernetic enhancement and life extension technologies and the rest of the population is basically pushed into a matrix to starve to death, die of toxic effects of a, of a toxic world with no protection from space weather or anything else. That's what's happening. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if uh, people, you, you mentioned the World War One, World War II. Uh, just remember in history when the waves 
a million man armies met in Europe, you know, swept across, met the Russians versus the Germans, you know, millions of people being slaughtered on a open field. And so if you don't think these people are capable of doing this kind of thing, or in the case of Russia, uh, you know, seven million people starving to death is nothing for these people. This is just the way you do yeah. things. Exactly. And so uh, we're about to head into this. And unfortunately, the United States, the people in the United States uh, are really unaware. They've never witnessed this. They've, they've been the cause of these kind of things in other countries. Uh, at the uh, at ridiculous, ridiculous reasons for going into Iraq or Afghanistan. Uh, and they bought it hook, line, and sinker, and then the absolute devastation on these populations. But the American public has been immune to this. They've been immunized, they've been separated, and they uh, really don't uh, have a clue as to what it's really like, but it's about to happen here. Yeah, and... Uh what I can tell the public that they need to know is it's easy to prep. If you're prepared for two weeks to two months, 95% of the so-called disasters that could happen, if you can prep in place, you can revert. You don't have to, by the way, you have to convince your neighbors to prep. You have to get your relatives to prep. The most important thing is not just you and, say, and your husband, wife, and a few kids to prep. If your neighbors aren't prepped, they're going to be at your doorstep in a panic in four days asking for you to save their hide. So if you don't convince them that they need to at least have three weeks of food and water and some self-protection, you've got disaster at your doorstep. Yeah, absolutely, and they'll be the first ones there, and the ones that will laugh the hardest and say, ah, you're one of those uh, survivalist uh, crazy people. <clears throat> what I do is I get straight be- in their, I, I get in their face and I get nasty. I get ugly. I'd rather get ugly now and they say they thank me later than than, uh, than be nice or try to apologize for being a, quote, conspiracy theorist. And it's the same with my relatives and friends. Uh, I've convinced now, having talked to my local people in our gated community, that all of them want to go into put in a community well. I've told them, in fact, uh, right at the end of our our block is a lady who and her husband are both attorneys. She's a, she's a district attorney and he's a uh, defense attorney for criminals. And they're prepped up to the eyeballs and armed to the teeth. And they're, they know what's going on, and other people in our area know what's going on. So, um, Dr. McKinney, what do you tell people to prep? Uh, basically, uh, you need uh, uh, six months, I say, but uh, basically uh, you could have two weeks' worth. Minimum, absolutely minimum of two weeks, but you need water. The first thing you need is water. The second thing you need is food. Uh, you need uh, clothes. I tell people also, you'd be surprised how few people have good shoes. St- simple things like this, but after the shoe drops, so to speak, uh, you're, you're going to need shoes. You're going to need to get around on your feet. Uh, how right. many people yeah. have good, many pairs of good shoes? Yeah, uh, and or work boots and uh, overalls and things like that to deal with the right. uh, breakdown of the power and God knows what kind of weather, and et cetera. Right. Amazing program, and we're going to be back in a moment with hour number three with Tim Alexander and Chris Harrison, nuclear expert. That's his radio name. He's one of the NRC consultants. Back right now, he's actually working on a project for the South Korea nuclear reactors. Um, when we put information on this on the show, we're not doing it for bizarre entertainment. This is not late night TV or radio. This is the way it is. And don't believe anything we say. Just ask better questions. Research it yourself. When you own the truth, do something. Prep your body with Nutrimeds. Prep your house. Get yourself ready. 2013 could be the year. 